So hello, we are ready to start. So before we start um, today, uh, let me just mention that uh, somebody had asked me uh, about a book on modeling, but not too mathematical, I think. So uh, because I had given a suggestion that uh, this book is now kind of standard, which is uh, by Keeling and Rohani, Modeling Infectious Disease in Humans and Animals. But there is also this one, an introduction to infectious disease modeling by Richard White and Emilia Winicki. And uh, this one is more rooted into uh, epidemic data and so on. It, it will also uh, I mean, write down the equations because it's a modern book, but uh, it discusses a, a lot uh, the meaning and the connection to data and more, more, uh, there are more discussions about exactly why certain terms are used in equations. So, okay, so, okay. So let's, uh, let's start with, a, uh, with uh, reviewing what we have done um, about modeling uh, last class, which was the SIR model. So just for you to, to remember, we take our population, we divide the population in classes with respect to a given disease. And we have worked from first model where the population is divided in class of susceptibles, infectious, and uh, recovered. Okay? So just to mention, there can be other compartments. The, the usual way that people uh, uh, write this thing um, is like this, like you put it in S, and then put an I, and put an R, and then uh, it's usually a dotted line saying that S contacts with I will generate a new I. Okay, so, but well, you can also have other models. At the end of the classes today, we will see some, uh, some, uh, some um, equations for other models, but there are models that uh, clearly we can think uh, easily. Yeah. This is a model for susceptible infectious and recovered and recovered is, uh, is, is immune and stays immune forever, which could be uh, maybe not the, the case in, ma in, many, in many, for many diseases. For instance, there are diseases that do not confer immunity, okay? And you would have uh, S, I, and then you go back here. Just, you don't have immunity, you, you stay susceptible, okay? So an infectious period of uh, time, and then you go back. This is called an SIS model. And then there are uh, diseases that are um, um, so severe that they um, practically kill everybody. Then and you go have SI, and for I, people die. Stay, stay in, so this would be S, it's called SI model. Obviously, the, the person doesn't stay infected forever, it uh, probably dies. Yeah. Then there are models that, that have, uh, ha which is very common, that this is not so common, because usually some immunity people do have. Like for instance, there, there, this SIS model is, is more usually connected, for instance, so when you really can have infection after infection. Uh, one example of this is gonorrhea. Okay? You don't have immunity and, uh, and you can have one after the other. And most of the time, it's not like that. And most of the time you have a, a, a period of immunity and then you can become susceptible again, which would be S, I, R, back to S, which is the S, I, R, S model. Right. This, uh, for instance, is, would be, 
situations like, uh, I mean, many, many po possibilities, even COVID, you have this, okay? You have the, the, your immunity wanes, decays, and you become susceptible again. Okay? Well, then you could have, obviously, more, more, more complicated things that you could have the susceptibles that have never been um, um, uh, uh, infectious, but you can have the susceptibles which come from the people that had an infection and lost their immunity. And sometimes, maybe, the infectiousness of these people is different. Okay? So then you could have two classes of susceptibles. The susceptibles that have... <coughs> sorry. <coughs> susceptibles... <coughs> then from here you would not go directly to this point you would go to a class of susceptibles uh, dif different susceptibles that are for instance they, they, for instance in malaria you do not have, uh, usually you, you lose imi immunity, but after many infections you actually get immunity. So you get a kind of, of uh, accumulation of immunity, and therefore for models for malaria to capture this, you need to have classes of people that have that are really susceptible, as is usually the case of the, of the, of the children in the in the areas where you have malaria, uh, endemic. And then you have the class of the people that have recovered once, the class of people that have recovered twice, and so on and so on. And um, this clearly gives you models that are uh, pretty much complicated and so on. So these are kind of things that can happen. And then what is also very common to consider is models that have susceptibles and then get to a class which is called exposed. So the person that the person that gets infected um, and do do not and uh, does not become infectious directly. It goes to a class which is this exposed, and from the, the exposed class, it, it goes to the infectious class. Okay? So this introduces a kind of, kind of delay in the, in the epidemic. Because you can stay, sometimes there are diseases where you can stay exposed for a pretty long time. And uh, so these are some, uh, some kind, kinds of models and you see this all the time and people just draw these things. And then the, in, in many papers in, in modeling, in, in, in epidemiology, people don't, do not even write the equations. <laughs> it's just broad this because then it's, it, it's usually in the appendix or something, but uh, usually that uh, there is, there is pretty much, uh, uh, I mean, it, 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 is, it is usually clear what, what are the equations. Uh, mass action, as we have done with the, with the SIR model, and to use the same kind of principles, and just drawing the, the, the compartments is sometimes uh, sufficient. OK, so this is just to give an overview of many things that many models that can be, be used. And there are models uh, for vector-borne diseases where you have to take uh, uh, human population and mosquito population, for instance. So you would have something like this. You have uh, the S, uh, say SIR, for humans. And then you have S for mosquitoes and I for mosquitoes. Most of the time, if it's, uh, it's like malaria or dengue, the, 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 the mosquito does not recover never. Okay? 
And then you will have to connect, uh, in order to go from this to this, you have to have contact with a with an infectious uh, 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 mosquito. And then for you to be uh, in the class of infectious mosquitoes, you have to have contact with, with, a, with a class of infected humans, and so on. This is the kind of thing that you will have, and um, that's it, okay. So, now, back to the SIR model, just to review without all the discussion that we have done for the model. And we, let's develop some other uh, things that are interesting. So, SIR model. So, this is the model. It is uh, this. And beta is the is the, the, the connected to the strength of the transmission. Remember, we we talked a lot about what, uh, how to, uh, uh, what ca goes inside beta, and this is actually a very important. For instance. So, uh, um, when we discussed the basic reprop reproductive number, we discussed uh, the number of uh, secondary infections that a primary infection uh, uh, creates in the population. And um, we saw that uh, something that was then called beta included the, the contact rate, number of, of contacts per unit time, which was a, a letter K. Okay. So if you have more contacts, then obviously you transmit more. The problem is, with, with this is, what is a contact? Okay. So th this is not obvious. Okay. It is obvious in certain cases, but and then which contacts count? Because it's not, it's, for instance, it is known for, for instance, tuberculosis, it's, it's respiratory. So what is a real um, uh, contact? And this is it's a particularly difficult case. Most of the contacts, most of the cases of, of tuberculosis are, are household cases. It's transmitted in houses. But well, somebody has to bring it into the house. So that then there has been contact somewhere else. But this is rare. So you have two beta has elements of, 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 of uh, contacts that are connected to the, the size of the household. But also has, has to have elements of, the, um, of, of rare events when you don't have household contacts, you have somewhere else contacts, which brings, which connects the household. So there has, a, has been a connection between households. And this is, is very difficult to, to actually build a mechanistic model for beta, for instance, for tuberculosis. And um, all respiratory diseases have this kind of problem. My, for instance, the opposite case is is measles, measles is very transmissible. And uh, actually, uh, random contacts uh, in, in, in outside the household, in the everyday life, can transmit measles. Right? So the contacts that count for measles are different than contacts that count for tuberculosis because of the nature of the disease. Right? And uh, for instance, the other cases are uh, uh, sexually transmitted diseases, then the contact is cl clearly defined. But uh, 
in the sense that the, 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 when can you have a, a, a transmission is when people have, have sex. Obviously, okay? So this is the case where you, where you have a good definition. Okay? But then you have other cases. Which are, for instance, with cholera, you have orofecal uh, or uh, 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 root, which is also kind of difficult. And what is the contact in this case? It's the contact with, with water. What, which water and, and, and how, how is this going to be, uh, uh, say, uh, uh, actually try to mechanistically build the, the transmission rate? It is usually that's, that's where things are really difficult. The mat mathematics for this is very easy. It's just a beta, but how to understand the real nature of the beta of the transmission rate? Sorry, it, this is not not so easy. So this I can solve. What we saw also then is the solutions to this over time. For S, it's always the case. For I, it always it is it starts like this. In this case, it is not symmetrical. Sometimes you just look at it and it seems more or less symmetrical. But uh, this has been uh, the, uh, the idea that the epidemic curves uh, could be symmetrical and uh, empirically has led to very uh, big errors. Uh, most famous one is a person that estimated for the HIV um, AIDS um, epidemic, the very start of the epidemic. Then you have the just what you have empirically is that you have the number of infections or near infections, and then you have the studs. <laughs> right? that, that's when, when you are starting. Okay? You are increasing and so on. So somebody actually published a paper and said, um, said okay, this is probably a Gaussian. It's just a, a bell curve. And then he fitted the best bell curve to could in this way and calculated the total number of people that got infected. And this is for, for like, to like to hundreds of thousands, which is orders of magnitude <laughs> smaller than what really happened. Okay? It's completely wrong. Okay? So this kind of, uh, <coughs> the, uh, this is, uh, shows also the value of the models in the sense that just trying to fit that with COVID, there are people that try to do this. Let's see, I have a part of the curve. Let's see what the best polynomial is or what is the best fit with an with a exponential or whatever. Okay? So just fitting without modeling. You're just trying to fit empirically the data. And this got always wrong. Okay? So having the dynamics described is very different. And finally here, <coughs> just for R is something like that. <coughs> and <coughs> as we saw, not all um, not all uh, persons in, the, in this model, then for a very long time, uh, R does not go to the total population. Right? There's, and, and S does not go to zero. Get, gets to a certain value, which is represents the, the number of susceptibles that are um, that did not have the the, the disease. Um, then we introduce the notion. Let me, I want to have the equations. The notion of basic reproductive number, which is something that we have defined for the SIR model, but all the other models that I, I mentioned, you can have the same concept. The concept is what, what is the condition for 
a, a, um, a state with no disease, if it's invaded by the presence of a pat new, um, new pathogen, what's the condition for this pathogen to grow in the population, to infect and create an epidemic? This will always be connected to certain conditions. We'll give you also for these other models something which will be the R0, okay? the basic reproductive number. Okay? So way, very easy way to, to discuss this is look at time t equal to zero. You will have v i d t at time t equal to zero is equal to beta times s of at time zero, i of time zero times n minus i at zero. And if this is positive, then the number of infections increases. And for this to be positive, so if this is uh, positive, okay, then you look at this, you need to have bet beta s of zero over n uh, minus i positive. And then you say at the very beginning, the population is totally susceptible, therefore s of zero is equal to n, therefore beta minus a must be zero because this is one. Therefore, if I divide everything by a, I will have beta over a bigger than one, and this is what I call R0. Right? And then we discussed that it can be interpreted at, at the number of secondary infections that a, a, a person has. Now, you clearly can also, uh, uh, so this is the number of secondary infections that a single infectee would create in a totally susceptible population. But now you can also obviously ask the question, what is the number for of secondary, uh, pop, uh, secondary uh, infections at a given moment of the epidemic? Because this will be different. If I, at the beginning, I can infect much more because I'm, I'm much more susceptible. If the number of susceptibles decreases, then the basic, then the reproductive number at time t would be different. Okay? So this reproductive number at time t, which is sometimes called r of t, which not to co be confused with r of t, with the, this r. Okay? This r would be simply the r0 times s at time t over n. Because that's what you would have here if you calculate this. Not at time t equal to zero, but at time t, just from this equation. Okay? Okay. So this is called the effective, effective reproductive number. which is also um, an important uh, element to evaluate in the situations. If, if you, are, you are talking about an ongoing epidemic, you, you are interested in knowing if this guy here is, it can only decrease, yeah? yeah. If this guy is decreasing and at, the, at which, uh, speed and uh, if it's it's going through the, val the threshold value one okay, means that if it's smaller than one then the number of new infections generated by one uh, primary case will be smaller than one therefore the epidemic is decreasing and uh, and and then then you better with COVID everybody messed up or our, our, our our effect, uh, effective uh, reproductive number is smaller than one, we can relax. So what happened is that uh, it got bigger than one <laughs> in, 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 in a matter of months. Right? So, um, okay. So, and all this has to do with this R0. It has the beta. And this beta, as I think, depends on many things, as uh, I was discussing. For instance, for COVID, beta depends if, if people are having contact. And if you, people stay at home 
and you have less contact, then, um, then beta is smaller and eventually r of t, or r0 of you want, is smaller than 1. You are in a situation of decreasing the number of cases, but this de depends on beta. If you now change beta over time, like relaxing uh, the restrictions, then maybe you will trigger again the epidemic because you are again crossing the, this threshold of, of r, r of t being equal to 1 is the threshold for you are increasing or decreasing. <coughs> well, then comes the case of how well, we, uh, uh, I will review also the uh, total size of the population, but now comes the case of how can we, in practice, determine R0. Right? So, so, okay, so the first thing that you would say, okay, I, I want, and maybe I can can actually determine the number of contact between people and so on, but beta also has that inside it. Beta is the number of contacts, possible contacts that can be infectious, and times the probability of a contact between an infected person and a susceptible person, the probability that it actually generates an infection, which is not, not always the case. Okay? So this probability, there's no way of determining this because you have, would have to have populations that you would infect them <laughs> in large numbers and see, count all the contacts and so on, which is completely not possible, okay? You cannot do an experiment with a disease and, and infecting a large number of people, okay? So in practice, you don't know. So you don't have a... a a priori way of knowing beta, therefore R0. So one thing that people try to do is, um, say you are at the very beginning of an epidemic. Okay? And at the very beginning of the epidemic, look at this equation here, the number of infected people. So the number of infected people at the very beginning is something which is, let me put, and then you have S over N minus A, okay? times beta. At the very beginning, S is very close to N, okay? Therefore, well, it's good approximation, say, even if it's not at time zero, but at, at the beginning, S is close to N, this is kind of constant, okay? so. Then we we'll say that this is approximately, it's not only at time zero, but at, at the beginning of the epidemic, this is times i times beta minus a, which is the same thing, if you want. We can put this equal to um, i. If we uh, divide everything by i, then you will have um, one over i here, you can have um, R0 yeah. minus 1. Okay. This is, uh, I divide here and he I should have written it. Okay, dividing both. Which says that I is an exponential in the time R0 minus 1, that's T. Okay, oh, 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 no, I made a mistake, yeah? Um. Ah, okay. Yeah, there, there, there's an A here, yeah? okay? Time, times A. So, you could fit a exponential at the very beginning, okay? This would be okay, in principle, uh, except that you at the very beginning, sometimes you don't know exactly A. So A is the, 
inverse of the typical duration of the infection. At the very beginning, this could be given surely by a distribution, but if you don't have many cases, then you don't have exactly the, the, the value of A. But could, could be overcome, this problem. A typical problem that happens, for instance, with COVID of doing this kind of thing would be, yeah, but uh, I don't know, I. <laughs> if you have asymptomatic cases, you don't know, I. So you have to do more work and uh, have a, a, a model with asymptomatic cases and symptomatic cases and, and re-derive some formula for R0. So this is, uh, would be more complicated. So again, I is not uh, not uh, initially originally known. What you know is the new infections per day of symptomatic people. And even if you don't have symptomatic people, the number of infectious people at time t is usually not known. It's the number of new infections at time t is usually known. But this also increases exponentially at the beginning. And then you could do, do this kind of exercise again. Well, then let me just mention one thing that's more complicated mathematically that I don't uh, want in to go into the, the full details. Actually, there are nowadays people that usually they, that calculate R0 or R of T, effective reproductive number, do not use this kind of thing. What is used is, is a method that comes from some something else, which is that you define the effective reproductive number as the number of secondary cases that a primary case uh, creates. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I didn't really understand how the i beta minus a became the ai r zero minus minus one. I here think. you put the a, you just put an evidence A here, then you get beta over over A minus one. You, Ooh, have, okay. you have beta minus A, they say that this is equal to A times beta over A minus one, okay? Okay, I get This it. is R0. So, there's a method. So, first of all, how is, so we have, usually, usually you will have, for instance, for, for our person, you have uh, usually uh, the moment of infection and the moment of the symptoms and then recover. Right. Three important. Now, this is, with regard to the disease, but with regard to the inf your infectiousness, usually what will happen is that you, at the starting point, you get infection. Then there is an incubation period, okay, incubation period, and then after that, the person can become infected, infectious without having the symptoms, and stays infectious. Sometimes not even at, to the total end. Uh, okay. So th this is the incubation, and here is you see. And that's obviously the dangerous phase because people don't have the symptoms and they can transmit. Uh, it's very clear with COVID, but, but many, many, many cases are like that. Okay, and that's for instance the, the big has, has been and still is the big, big, big issue with HIV AIDS. The, the incubation period is years long, right? long symptoms. So now there is a method. Okay, so keep this in mind. There is a method that um, can be used to estimate R zero simply from the curve of new date, new cases per day or per week, per unit time. 
and the knowledge of something which is called the zero interval. So the zero interval is the time between uh, this guy here that gets infected at the time t equal to zero until he, in typically, it's a distribution of time, yeah? but until he infects the next person, okay? which would be something probably here in this region. Okay? So uh, each case, each person will have, say, will infect a different number of, of, of people. So you have a distribution of zero time. So the problem with zero time is that uh, you don't know when you infect people, when you got infected, the precise moment. Because of incubation periods and asymptomatic phase and so on, then you don't know. But you can know better the, the day you have the symptoms. Here, this day, this is this better. And then you can say, well, then there is the day the person I infected has the symptoms. And this is better, it's easier to determine. That's that you can collect this from from data that are is collected at hospitals and so on. And then usually there is a field of your data that says days of first symptoms. And well, okay. The, and then you should have to know who has infected whom, which is difficult. For COVID, this has been determined at the very, very beginning in China. And uh, because the number of cases was small and uh, people could follow some chains of infections uh, in a smaller city and uh, could determine who and had infected who and therefore could determine the zero. So knowledge of the serial interval plus the, the, the uh, knowledge of the number of new cases per day, there's a method to calculate R0 from this without any model, without model. Okay? So, and this is due, uh, due to something that's called um, renewal equation, but it's an integral differential equation. I, I think it will be a mess to, this, to describe this with the integrals and so on. I think we will get lost with this. But it's, it's completely doable in the sense of uh, the modern way of calculating R, R0 and R of t. It's, it's not fitting the model. It is doing this, it's, the, it's using the knowledge of the zero interval plus the number of new cases per day, which can be used to, I'm, I'm messing up my, my trousers here. <laughs> uh, the, which can be used to, to calculate uh, R of T. That, that's the way actually, the, the in COVID, that's, that's the best way to calculate this. And it actually in Brazil, it's our group that calculates this. We have this on online and so on. Okay. But the, the different point is to make uh, uh, people uh, pay attention in the sense that people that uh, take decisions, public health decisions, and they usually don't have any idea about uh, the mathematics and so on, and uh, they don't feel assured that this is actually good and so on. And that's that's part, I mean, this is particularly strong in Brazil because, well, because of, 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 of the nature of the, the, the departments of, uh, of public health do not have uh, model as usual. But it's not the case in, in, in countries like uh, France or Germany or UK. Modelers actually do this kind of thing and this is taken into account. So, okay, so uh, let's go back and still with R0, let us remember uh, that R0 is important to determine the total size of the epidemic. What is the total size of the epidemic? Is, uh, we have an epidemic that, that 
at, at a certain point, the number of infectious um, uh, uh, individuals goes to zero, that the epidemic goes away. In the model, technically, this is some time infinity. But obviously, this is it's a problem of the model in the sense that it is uh, uh, a model that can have uh, 10 to minus 5 individuals because it's, it's, it's still real numbers. But anyhow, at the end of the epidemic, there will be a certain uh, number of people that have uh, gotten the, the disease and uh, a certain number of people that continue to be susceptible. So the total size of the epidemic is the total number of people that have had the disease. And this co could be calculated easily. by just by the small trick of dividing let me I, I need equations if I take this equation and divide by this equation I will have ds dt divided by dr dt, which is the same as ds dr. And here you will have the division of minus beta. You have s i over n divided by a. I divided by i, which gives you minus beta over a. Um, S over N, which is equal to minus R0 S over N. This is a differential equation, ds, d, let me write here, ds dr minus R0 S over N, which is a linear equation of S in terms of R. It can be solved. So S will be some S0, e to minus R0 divided by uh, times R of t, let me write R of t, not to compute with R0, okay, divided by N, solution. Now, when the, pop, when the, when the number of infectious persons goes to zero, the total population which is of size n, is composed only of susceptibles plus recovered. Okay? Ah, here, before I, I have this step. Now, what is S0? S0 is the, the value of S when R is 0. Okay? And R is 0 at time 0, at the beginning, when no recovered. Therefore, at the beginning, the total population is susceptible, therefore S0 is n. Now, which allows me to write this S over n here. Equal to this, n. Now, S is equal to n minus r of t, okay? of, the, of this r here, not to confuse with the reproductive number. Okay? So, Therefore, this, this guy here is 1 minus r over t, over n. It's equal to a to minus r0, r over n. Okay? Or, if you want, my usual way to write this is this one. At the end of the epidemic, when I is zero, there are no, no infection anymore. So this again, now what is this? This is an equation for R over N, okay? You have R over N here, here, and that's an equation. An equa not a differential equation, it's, it's called, it's also not, it's, it's, it's called a transcendental equation because you have a, 
exponential here and a polynomial linear here. And uh, this can be solved by either graphically, you plot this, this is just a line, but this is, is a curve, and at the intersection, that's the solution. Okay? You do this numerically usually. Okay? But the, the point here, which is important for us, for our conclusions, is that the final size, which is r over n at time infinity, or when i is zero, depends only on r zero. On the, on the combination beta over a, not on anything else. And actually, this is usually the case for the other models also. Although this is not obvious, because the, uh, here, the way that I came to calculate the final size was dividing this by this. <coughs> and, and by noticing that this is an equation for s in terms of r, and, and then I can solve. But sometimes you cannot do this. But you can also find methods to calculate the final size of them. It will depend usually only on R0, which is nice. Me means that R0 is actually very important to know. This here, you could draw uh, a plot here, where on the, this axis you put the R0, and on this axis you put the what I would call r infinity over n, that's the final size. r0, obviously, if, if uh, r0 is uh, smaller than 1, there's no epidemic, there's no final size to calculate. Okay? And this has the following form. Okay? So, and this final size uh, increases very fast due to the exponential here, uh, near one. And uh, it's only for r very, very large, then you will approach the total uh, the value n. Okay? So, conclusion is r0, which can be calculated at the beginning of the epidemic, gives you a, 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 an estimate of how many, potentially how many uh, uh, people will get infected at the end. And this is nice. But again, in real life, there, there, there is, it, there is the need, uh, the ki this kind of uh, situation, for instance, you have, we have had this kind of situation with COVID. We knew that um, R0 would be like 2.5, like 3, more or less. And you know, you know the population, and then uh, you go and uh, not with an SIR model, but uh, some better model. You can try to estimate the total size of the population. That has been done by the group of the, of, I think, uh, of Imperial College, actually, and in the London School of uh, Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, also. And that, that created this, uh, this situation that. You could have, well, the, uh, you, can, you can estimate the total size of the epidemic and then uh, so estimating mortality rates, you can estimate the total number of people that would die from it. And uh, for instance, for US, that give, would give you two millions. This is the kind of thing that one is behind this kind of calculation. But one point which is very important is that how to communicate this, because this here is the situation where you have this, the, the, uh, an epidemic and there is no public health measures to counter the epidemic. Right? If you have public health measures to counter the epidemic, you are effectively modifying either, I mean, maybe you need a different model, but uh, at least you are modifying the parameters. For instance, the beta is the A. Therefore, modifying R0. So R0 is not, uh, if, uh, uh, there's no things that are a fixed value for beta and A. They can be modified by quarantining, by, 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 uh, by use of masks, or many public health measures, which obviously will modify the result of the total size of the population. Because these 
these measures are meant to modify this, the, this, the, 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 the number of people that will die. Okay? So there's the need, uh, and this is an not only with respect to this point, that when people communicate about this, they should be very, very cautious. Because uh, when you communicate with journalists or with the, with the, with the public or even with decision uh, makers, um, you, m you must make it clear that what you are uh, uh, saying is that's the total potential if you for a decision maker. If you don't do anything, that what can happen. Okay? Therefore, do something, it, it will not happen. And obviously then, a year later, we are criticized in saying that you have been uh, 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 too uh, pessimistic, but, okay? that that happens. Oh, it's a kind of paradox for, for public health measures and so, so on. So if you have a, a person that, uh, you have a situation where the government or uh, takes uh, strong action, avoids uh, many cases of uh, the disease, and then people say, well, this disease was not so important at, at all because, well, only one a couple of people died. Well, so it's a kind of paradox, it's a political paradox, obviously. But uh, which is, uh, is always present in, uh, in this, in this thing. Yeah. For instance, this, this story about the two million uh, people that could die was, was connected to the group of New Ferguson, that uh, actually New Ferguson will be here in, in, in the school of next July that I mentioned last, last class. And, uh, and if, People that are important in, in, in public health and so on criticize a lot of uh, Ferguson because uh, the, this was not correct. Actually, we we'll never know if it was correct or not because it's just uh, showing the potential of the disease. But communication was maybe a very problematic thing with, uh, with at that time. So, now let's review and uh, one more thing, and then we will go for something else. Which was the motion of herd immunity. Which is also a concept that 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 is very problematic from the point of communication of epidemiological models. So, so herd immunity is technically connected to vaccination. So you have the population at the initial, let's say, at the initial point of an epidemic. Uh, it, this is, uh, is, is uh, let's say, uh, sometimes it's not with COVID when vaccines were introduced there was already people with, which were immune due to infection okay? but um, sometimes it's different than a disease where you at the beginning of a, an epidemic you already have a vaccine okay? it's not a, a new emerging disease okay? so at the time t equal to zero, you say, I have my total population is composed only of susceptible plus vaccinated people. Okay. And then we look again at this equation. And say, well, the, the we, we want to know when this here is positive or negative. Now one way of uh, looking at this is saying that it's equal to zero in the sense that uh, if it's equal to zero, it's, uh, it's the threshold value that I will calculate, okay? So this means that beta times S, oh, oh there's an A here, times S over, over I, over N minus I, equal to zero, then I say S 
Oh, okay, this means S over N is equal to A over beta, which is 1 over R0. Yeah. And S, on the other hand, is S is equal to N minus V. And then you have N minus V over N is equal to 1 over R0. Therefore, 1 minus V over N is equal to 1 over R0. V over N is 1 minus 1 over R0, which is the number of people that you have to vaccinate in order to have the uh, minimum number of people you have to vaccinate in order to avoid an epidemic due to vaccination. Yeah. Is that the same one that we saw? Yeah, that's the same the one. The last yeah. class, okay. That's the same. But, and this is uh, called the herd immunity. Herd immunity. Uh, threshold. So, why was it that Why was it that there had been so much people talking about herd immunity even before we had the vaccine you, in COVID case? That was a mess, yes? Like in 2020, uh, people saying we are already at the, at the herd immunity threshold. So what people meant by that was that instead of vaccination, we had already had a lot of cases which people were immune, therefore they were like vaccinated. Eh? And uh, if we are already at the herd immunity, then there was kind of, okay, it's over. But it's completely wrong, right? Completely wrong, because uh, this is a totally susceptible population that you get back a certain number of you get vaccinated and you have the introduction of a very small number of infectious uh, uh, individuals that can, could generate or not an epidemic, depending on the value of, of the number of people vaccinated. If you are an ongoing thing, okay, if you are an ongoing epidemic, you have a lot of people that are infected, not a small number of people that are infected. Okay? At time zero, you see, here we assume S plus V. But at time T, of an ongoing um, epidemic, you have a lot of people which are infectious, actually. Right? And therefore, uh, this, uh, this, this, this concept does not apply directly. Okay? So uh, in this was really, really very complicated, like in uh, June 2020. The people are saying we are at herd immunity. Why did, why did people say this, actually? Okay. So you had a certain number of infections. And so people just say, OK, uh, this uh, is 1 over uh, 2.5, let's say. This here, the value of this is 60% of the population. And then there were. People try to estimate um, uh, how many people already had the infection. This is very difficult in a population when you have asymptomatic cases and also if your system of information system which notifies the number of cases is not so good, which is our case. Yeah? Uh, so one way of knowing the total number of people that have been infected is doing, doing field research. You go on and you do uh, serological testing against antibodies in a population. You use 
statistical methods to sample the population and uh, so on. And then you tr try to get uh, this number. Okay. In Brazil, this has been done uh, first by by a group with, uh, uh, from Federal University of Pelotas, which uh, happens to, though Pelotas uh, University is maybe not the most uh, famous Brazilian university, it has one of the best um, epidemiology uh, um, uh, graduate studies and they got all the stuff. And they conducted this with with uh, with uh, initial support of of um, of the Ministry of Health, and then they made this uh, uh, nation uh, nationwide. And uh, it was at the very beginning; they got like five percent of the population, and uh, then they went on to repeat the thing. But then, uh, then everybody knows what happened here in Brazil: the Ministry of Health uh, was changed, and they just cancelled the thing. So what? Uh, what we had is uh, for the city of Sao Paulo, there has been an initiative by, by people from the University of Sao Paulo and by private labs, which was the Fleury lab. And they conducted this kind of uh, serological testing uh, well into, into the end of 2020. And then and we had like uh, never been anything close to 60%. Never. And um, then, that, that is um, also a very curious thing about this. There was another way of trying to, to, to know, to estimate the uh, number of people that have the, this, uh, have, um, have immunity due to infection, uh, which is uh, the, the number of people that have, have uh, had the disease, and the infection, is called the prevalence, right? the systematic prevalence. Uh, there is one group that actually did this. And um, in, in the city of Manaus, and this group, so led by uh, people from also from the Imperial College and by a group from Mr. Sabino here in, in at the Institute of uh, Tropical Medicine of USP, and <coughs> they collected data from blood blood banks, okay? and they tested this, and you have the donors and so on. It's a biased sample because uh, what takes a person to go and donate blood, okay? That can be, you are not sampling the population actually. Okay? You know, you are, there's a bias and there's a bias that you don't know how to actually do well. But well, if you don't have serological testing, you don't have nothing else, that's more or less used in many, in many countries. Um, you try to, to use this kind this thing. And they estimated that by October 2020, something like 78% uh, of the population had the infection. Which would mean that, um, that we somehow were over the threshold and we should be in a decaying situation. So this created a very, very, um, I mean, this really, really created a fight between groups, research groups in Brazil, from people from Manaus saying that uh, the, uh, this result uh, would lead to many deaths because uh, relaxation of, uh, of, um, of, uh, of lockdowns and so on. Uh, would happen as a consequence that we have already so many people infected that we don't need any more the restrictions and so on, which is not true at all because the decision makers they had already relaxed the things much 
<laughs> before the, 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 the results were published and uh, so on. But uh, this, this was a matter of, of real heated debate. And um, what happens in this case is we already had the first, uh, we, we, we had, so how could that happen? And so one thing is reinfection, loss of immunity. So reinfection could be a case. Therefore, with reinfection, there's no concept of herd immunity at all. And, 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 I mean, it, it, there is a concept for vaccination, but using this, this thing to say now we are in the decaying phase and so on, then, then that's not anymore true because you can have infections, people, um, recurrent uh, infections. So, but how, how, now, would that be true or not? That, that would be a, a point, because there was usually used um, the concept of reinfection in clinically that is adopted by the Minister of Health, not only here, but so, is that you have a case of a person <laughs> that got the disease, tested the disease by a PCR, or even sequencing, and the same people that gets again the disease and is tested and has a PCR and then sequencing. So that's very difficult to have this kind of thing, okay? Because most of the time, what happens in the in the practices, people goes in say I'm I'm not feeling well and so on. And well, then they give you something or you you get in the hospital, and uh, and then this is communicated, but. There was no way of, of actually saying, okay, this is a reinfection, let, let's see uh, if, if this person has an old test and so on. This, this was not done. Okay? So nobody knew actually if there could be reinfections. And, um, and therefore, the 78% that they found uh, is uh, remained. As, as a mystery at the time. What happened next is that there came the new variants. And in October, November, is the, is the time you have this gamma variant in Manaus. Okay? Now, at that time, nobody knew if variants could evade the immune system which was immune due to previous infection or not. Right? So, actually, that, that is an experience thing because our group actually went on to calculate. We, we wrote a model, and one thing in the model, that it had a reinfection possibility in the model. Okay? So, the model is complicated. You have to have the people that have had never an infection, then you have the epidemic, S-E-I-R type, but then you have also the people that have uh, uh, been uh, um, uh, infected, and then they, you, you need a, a compartment for people that have been infected, but then can get reinfected. So if you do this, you will have a model with a lot of, 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 of parameters. And uh, one, one thing was that we, we wanted to estimate the, um, the how more transmissible was the gamma variant than the previous, the wild one was, okay? And this can be known if you have the curve of the proportions of, uh, of the cases which are gamma or not gamma. Okay? So you plug in into this model and um, you have several unknown uh, um, things. 
in uh, parameters, and um, one of the parameters is the number of people that uh, got reinfected, the proportion, the, the, uh, the transmissibility of the new variant with respect to the transmissibility of the previous variant, and the number of initial people that had the had before the introduction of gamma, what, what was the number of people that already had the the, the infection. And you do this, and then you fit this model. You are maybe seeing something about fitting models more complicated in, in, in the course of statistical methods. You do something which is called uh, maximum likelihood methods and so on to estimate the better parameters. And it turned out that the R0 of the gamma variant was 2.5. With a, with a confidence interval, like 2.5 times the, the previous one. So it was more than twice transmissible. And it turned out that the proportion of reinfections would be 30%. And curiously, that the number of people that had the, before the introduction of common, the number of people that had the uh, already had the, the infection turned out from the maximum likelihood and so on, turned out to be 78%, which is very, very surprising. And, and so th this confirmed, I mean, uh, that there's a theoretical confirmation of the work of the people that had to, the, the, with the group dollars. But well, these people also went on to. Uh, to back to the, the blue planners, and they tested for uh, uh, reinfection because they had already tested, so that the blood is still there most of the time. And, so, and then they go on and, and went on for the, the same donors, okay, usually like recurring, and found that the proportion uh, of, uh, of reinfections was 28%. Which was exactly what we had yeah, the 30 with the confidence and so on. So apparently, what happened in, uh, there in Manaus was due to reinfections and to increase the transmissibility of, of, the, uh, of the new virus. And this argument about herd immunity, then you could choose, uh, you could uh, relax and so on, did not hold. Actually, because first of all, that you have reinfections, and this has been uh, the, the here discussed in the, in the context without reinfections, and then you have a new variant with more transmissibility and so on. So you have to take really, really care with this with this kind of constant. Now, other things that happened related to the, the idea of the herd immunity. Uh, due not to vaccination, but due to natural infection, is that populations uh, are heterogeneous with respect to the uh, transmissibility, in the sense that people have certain susceptibilities to, uh, to get the infection, and they also have some uh, 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 their own transmissive infectivity, which is variable between individuals. Therefore, there are actually distributions. And what we use here usually will be the averages. But if the distribution is, is, is wide, maybe you should take into account the distribution. And, uh, and there's theory for that. And uh, these people. That, uh, this is the group of, of a Portuguese researcher. It's actually a friend of mine, Gabriela Gomez. And she and the group came, came out that they predicted that the, the herd immunity threshold due to the heterogeneity would be much smaller than expected. So. This created a real, real uh, 
debate in the community of modeling and, uh, and so on. Because this also went into the direction, okay, relax people. It's not that bad. The herd immunity threshold is not 60%, maybe it's just 20. And we are already at 20. So, well, the point was, okay, they, they published this as a preprint initially, and, um, and they couldn't get published, actually. Yeah. I understand that by now we could add susceptibility to the model of COVID, for example, but like it's impossible to uh, to put that in the model in the beginning, right? Like when you were explaining how we would see the disease uh, a few uh, a few time after the the mm -hmm. beginning, it would be impossible, right? But at, at the very beginning, yes. At the very beginning, you don't have data. And actually, th this kind of thing is difficult to know. Uh, what is your susceptibility? What is your uh, effectivity? Uh, this is usually things that uh, are connected to your network of contacts. And, uh, and then you should uh, fit a distribution to the data. And you rather fit. Because th that's, for instance, in all the models, when, you, when it comes to this, okay, let's say you want to fit a model, or FIR model. Okay. You will have to fit the beta because you don't have any previous knowledge of the beta. You can have of A, for instance. A is the duration of the infection. Okay, maybe you don't have, it's also variable, but it's like from 5 to 10 days, or depends on the, on the disease, 5 to 10 days. It's not the A. Okay, so the, you need, know already, uh, at least the order of magnitude of the gap. But beta, no idea. Beta comes from the, from the, from the probability of infection between people and from the network of contacts. Network of contacts, maybe you can even estimate. But probability of infection has to be fitted to the body. So there's no, uh, I mean, there, there are people that try to, 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 to calculate this, not from models, but from data. But this, you need years of data and it has to be for instance, this has, there has been an attempt to do this with uh, HIV AIDS, because then the contact is well, well, well established. And then if you have a lot of people, you have a cohort that you can follow over 20 years, okay, then maybe uh, if these people collaborate and uh, you can estimate the probability of infection due to uh, uh, sexual intercourse uh, without, uh, without condoms, for instance. Okay? that you can do this, okay? It's like, uh, the, the results I've seen, is it's like about uh, two, one or two percent probability small, 0 0.01, up to 0 0.05, okay? That, that, that's the average, it's not the individual prob uh, uh, probability, okay? So, uh, okay. So just uh, to, to finish the story, so they, these people went on to fit a model with uh, heterogeneous uh, susceptibilities and infectivities and, and claimed that the number of the threshold would be much smaller. And the point is, with, with the data we have, with the unknown number of asymptomatic people, um, the fitting of the models is very, very difficult and goes through assuming values for certain parameters. Okay. And uh, this obviously is too, 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 I mean, this is not enough to make the case for a given disease in the sense that you have, you, your model depends on assumptions that uh, you um, parameters that you have just to put on it, uh, give a value and say, let's see. And uh, for instance, which is the shape of the distribution of susceptibilities and, and, and infectivity, the shape. Is it wide, is it not? So they postulated something, which was a gamma distribution, but well. Yeah. And it got finally uh, 
published in a non-written journal, a journal, a journal of theoretical biology, a very good journal, but also reworked because it was an, an interesting that of the theoretical point of view that the, that, the, that the threshold could be lower due to the heterogeneity. This is nice. It was very good work. But well, then you have, the point is, the fitting to actual data of COVID was much more difficult because this is implies uh, that, that you would have to have the knowledge of things that you cannot. Right? And therefore, the, the fitting was, was not a strong argument. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, let's make a break right now and uh, then we will continue with more about um, peak of infections and, and new models. <laughs>